welcome to another awesome video. Hello, welcome to another awesome video. We picked up this broken Stuzzy MemoCord Mini due to its very unusual tape cartridge. But after fixing the machine, we were unprepared for all of the drama that was recorded on the tape inside. It was a reality show that involved high-profile construction problems. It could be progressive collapse of all 50-story buildings. Hundreds of people could die. An immigrant fleeing a repressive government. I went through real hell in the communist regime because I refused to become a communist. To find his success in America. That the house which I built and the property around it became my dream. But only to have those dreams dashed by divorce. Somehow she learned that in the United States women received the house. And that's why she told me many times, get out of the house. And surrounded by backstabbers and office politics. I have no information and completely cut out one of the two worst times in my professional life. We'll get back to that guy in a minute. Now let's talk about this machine and why all that information would be on there. You know today when you send a text message or... or it goes over Wi-Fi or network. Yeah, but you just type it in, right? So back in the 60s, typing and dictation were specialized skills. So you, these machines, you know, what do you think they were used for? They were used for... for recording. For yeah, so so like a businessman would, would dictate a letter and then his secretary would type it and mail the letter. What do you think of that? Text. Um, I would like to do phone because it's easier. Stuzzy started producing these transistorized recorders in the 1960s, starting with one, the XJE4 with permanent reel-to-reels. The one I have, the Memocord Mini, looks like it was produced from about the mid-70s to the very early 80s. And uh, based on the recordings, I think some of them were made between the 1994 and... I made this guy's from Austria. Now, the recorder's from Austria. I think this guy might be from Russia or Latvia or somewhere like that. The size of the unit and tape together are very competitive with even a, this much later Sony model. The cassette tape it, itself is the most interesting part of this. It's a proprietary format with some unusual features. Look at the numbers twirling around there and the little white gauge. What do you think? You don't see those on regular cassettes, do you? Mm -mm. What do you think those are for? Don't know. Well, the name of the tape format is the Index-Matic. So I believe those marks are to help index points of the tape. So if you're typing in a letter and you need to rewind a few words, you could use those marks to go back. There were desktop machines with foot pedals and things that made these easier to uh, use for typing. Uh, ultimately, this tape format went the way of the dinosaur. And I feel like even though they came out with microcassette recorders and other smaller recorders, the Philips cassette sort of became the de facto standard and you know it's easy it's compatible you got it in the car so it's pretty easy to declare that one the winner when I got this thing it wasn't working and there was a lot of battery corrosion on there see how it's corroded so I used a piece of aluminum foil because aluminum is a conductor that's right I basically just conducted around that I also don't like the ejection system because you just pull it out I like the tapes where you just click an inject button and yeah. then you go and then you go, um, boop, it's out, and then you just pull it out. Yeah. This is also a, a rim drive, whereas a tape is a capstan drive, so the speed is not going to be as consistent. But look at that wheel has got numbers on it, so it's got a speed gauge on it. I'm not sure how you adjust it. There was a little spring there, but that, that whole thing. When do we get to where the drinking part happens? Oh, you're talking about the recording, yes. We'll, t we'll talk about that next. So this wheel actually just presses up against the uh, rubber wheel. I don't, you know, the whole thing that it was under pivots and that thing presses up. I decided to clean the rubber wheels. I couldn't get completely consistent speed, but it was uh, pretty good it, when you adjusted this. I could get it to sort of slow down a little bit if I messed with that, that pivot. So below this plate, we can get access to the additional circuits. Note on the left, you've got STUSI on that chip and 90. Surely that couldn't mean 1990. Anyway, what I was doing now is looking for a line output. I grounded one end of uh, some amplified speakers and then just sort of tapped around. And on, actually on that STUSI chip on one of the pins, I was able to get a line output and record some sound. So this allowed me to play it back and just record it into Audacity where I could listen to it later and mess around with the speed and see what was on the tape. There were numerous very critical construction cover-ups. 
So based on some conversational clues, I was able to date the recording to the mid 90s and looking on the back of the battery compartment, I could tell that this guy was located in Seattle. And so I decided I would start by asking my friend Google to see if he could help me solve this mystery. Okay, Google. Can you search uh, Seattle area construction companies active in the 1990s, find the vice presidents, produce dossiers, filter on the ones of Baltic descent, then cross-reference that with public uh, divorce records? Sorry, I don't have any information about that. <sighs> the good news is I don't have to worry about Skynet taking over next week, but the bad news is I had to figure this out the old-fashioned way. This ought to be a good lesson for you about releasing personal info. Google is retroactive. So even though this was recorded, you know, 30 years ago, we can still find all this information about this guy just from a few casually dropped names and conversations. So we, based on some Google searches, we can figure out that he was uh, involved with some very prominent Seattle architects who helped design the University of Washington. And Fist. also um, the Twin Towers. Yes, one of the architects he worked for was responsible for design of the Twin Towers, I think. If you know who this guy is, leave a comment. Did, did they work it out? Did, did they get back together? Did he get divorced? What happened? This is a very compelling reality show. Anyway, you want to say... I wonder how it got ended up at Goodwill. Maybe it didn't work, right? So the battery's probably corroded. It didn't work. They found it in, when they were cleaning out an office or maybe his family was, you know, maybe he died and his family was cleaning something out and they just stuck it in the Goodwill and we picked it up for a few dollars. Anyway, I guess that's about it. And uh, that's about uh, it for the Stezzy Microcord uh, Memory. <laughs> The Stuzzy Mimicord Mini. Well, okay. We'll see you next time. You, we'll see you next time for another awesome video. Bye. Thanks. It's water in the body. So her body became softer, more and more watery.